create a plan that's more advantageous and that more taxpayers benefit from because obviously expansion of a library more people could use, more people would probably be interested in. There's a table in here for you to look at. It presents the cost of the schools um, as well as the overall percentage of state reimbursement anticipated. Um, Lily B actually turns out to be the lowest um, reimbursement from the state when you compare it to the total project cost. So, oh, and then I'd like to mention that the soccer field um, at Lily B is pretty heavily used. Um, and even for youth sports such as football in the fall, lacrosse is becoming a big sport. And the towns at Bride, the, the fields at Bridebrook are typically used for lacrosse this time of year. And so the soccer field's used for soccer purposes. And taking away a, a, another field at Bridebrook, well, we'd be taking away a field and then relocating one again at Bridebrook. I think it would still decrease our field space that's available for youth sports activities. I have some questions um, with these things in mind. Is can the Nyanic Center Flanders project plan also be phased in two stages that would be similar to the LBH proposal of renovating Lily B first and Flanders in about 10 years? Can the design plans be modified to reduce the cost of the NCS Flanders plan, like eliminate the amphitheaters? Because the NCS renovation is somewhat of a small project, can NCS be renovated without a mill increase to the town? Like, if, is there enough debt coming off the records to undertake the NCS project? And if so, would that allow Flanders to be rebuilt sooner to address the problems there? And what else could Lily be used for? Obviously, Parks and Recreation would be able to use the gym, um, the relocation of the, um, the, live, the youth center um, to allow expansion of the library, uh, the education offices, and um, like, how can the elementary school project be designed in a way that would offer more benefits to the taxpayers as well? Um, let's see. And can the savings to operation and maintenance, obviously, what's been, which is going to occur once these buildings are renovated um, and closing a school be factored into the debt payment. I don't know how that is um, turned back into the town. <coughs> and finally, I'd like to just say that I didn't purchase my house in Nyanic to reside in the Nyanic Center School District, and I didn't purchase my house to patronize the downtown Nyanic restaurants. I moved to Nyanic from downtown Mystic to live in a quaint, functional town and in 2013, Niantic was voted a fan favorite town over Mystic. I believe this happened because real people actually live here. <laughs> Currently, downtown Niantic provides goods and services for the community. And going forward, it will be especially important to maintain a balance between the community look and feel and a destination for tourists to visit. An important consideration in the closing of Niantic Center School is the closing of Niantic Center School and what will likely become of the property. Um, let's see. The yeah, first selectman's yeah, blog, I'm almost done, identifies uh, residences to be built within walking distance of the village as one way to, um, to kind of up the downtown. Um, but we know that there's not a lot of available space in the area and is Nyanic Center targeted for condominium complex or housing? And then I'd like to point out that it seems clear to me that it's anticipated that the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance are going to endorse this plan or proposal to renovate Lily B. Haynes. Jeff Newton has already moved the principal of NCS to Lily B. And the students at NCS have been informed by st school staff that their school is closing. An interim one-year principal has been appointed at NCS. And on May 25th, Mark Neckerson spoke openly about the fact that he would approve the LBH proposal. And this was done without hearing delegations, without considering the financial impact on the taxpayers as well as the overall impact on the community of Niantic. I hope the Board of Selectmen thoroughly consider this matter and make a fully informed decision. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak in to public delegations tonight? Okay. I gotta really be strict on the five minute rule and we start the timer here. We're running over. Don Rhodes, twenty six North Road. Don? And I, I just want to say I appreciate everybody's um, attention to what everyone was saying. I do not agree with the new plan with the schools, mainly because I don't think that it's giving the town, all of the residents, something with our tax money. I work hard for my money. I want it to be there. 
yes, my kids are in the school system, but one day they're not, and I want to have some facilities to be able to use when they're not around. So my wish to you is that you do consider what some of the other folks have been saying, that there is a better way. There's a better way to spend our money. There's a better way to serve our kids and to serve this town. So I hope that you do truly think about it before you act. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay. Approval of the minutes, meeting May 18, 2016. Move to approve the minutes of the meeting of the May 18, 2016 meeting as submitted. Second. Any corrections? Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Consent calendar? Move to approve the consent calendar for the meeting of June 1st, 2016 in the amount of $2,742.91. Second. Been seconded. Comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Interlocal agreement. By and between the town of East Lyme and the town of Waterford for the, for the provision of animal control services. Folks, this is um, this is a uh, something that's been long, long time coming here. Uh, we've had more of a handshake agreement with the town of Waterford for several years now, as we've shared an uh, animal control officer for uh, further referred to as an ACO. As you know, we share the facility in Waterford. And that agreement is they provide the facility, we provide the vehicle, they pay for the ACO, we reimburse them. That relationship is flip-flopping, um, and, and it, they will still maintain the facility, and we will still provide the vehicle, but we will hire the next ACO, and they will reimburse us. And um, so we're kind of flip-flopping it, but we're also committing to paper and an agreement between the towns, our relationship and how reimbursement will occur and who's responsible for what. And um, frankly, uh, Waterford's been uh, more than generous, extremely generous with the, with the handshake agreement that we've had over the years. Um, you know, a lot of the costs, a lot of the extras uh, we were not built for. A lot of the fill-in, you know, when the ACO went on vacation, someone else had to step up. Waterford just kind of covered it through their police officers or, or volunteers. Um, so I'm, I'm, this town has been entirely grateful to the town of Waterford for the relationship we have had and will now continue to have in a different format. You've been, uh, the Board of Selectmen were uh, given the contract for perusal, uh, Attorney Collins is here to um, review anything as she has fully vetted this contract, uh, is prepared to respond to any technical questions. I can respond to any of the um, intentions of the language or the um, spirit of the agreement. So um, does anyone on the Board of Selectmen have any questions for me? We will then open it up for public comment. I wanted to fully vet the information first before the public commented, should there be anybody who wishes to. I'll lead off. Mrs. Hardy. Um, previously, as you stated, we were using uh, a Waterford police officer who really did an outstanding job. Uh, I had some reservations about that when it first when we first went to that agreement because obviously there was a great differential in what we were paying for a certified police officer compared to what we had been paying previously for the dog or uh, animal control warden. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an attempt to uh, lay out what the duties of each community will be. And part of that agreement is that we will take on the responsibility of hiring the animal control officer. So we're assuming some sort of equitable agreement here between ourselves and Waterford. What is the uh, 
current rate for uh, animal control officers in the region for payment? It varies widely, ma'am, and that's because some towns do have a police officer, as we've been paying, who is making a hundred thousand plus dollars a, a year. Mm -hmm. um, this um, ACO that we went and um, uh, Anna, what was the going rate hourly? Was it twenty-four dollar range for thirty-five hours a week? Is our anticipated cost now? We are also anticipating that at some point, point we're going to need an assistant to the animal control officer, who will be paid a, a somewhat less amount, but will be on call. So when the ACO is on vacation, taking a day off, sick leave, etc., that we have someone else to care for the animals. Okay, I was going to note that previously we did have a designated deputy dog warden. Deputy dog. Um, just so happened it was a husband and wife team yeah. so we had a little bit of a problem when we both of them had their anniversary uh, so this cost would be sh the cost of this and benefits are shared going to be shared 50 50. correct all right and um waterford is going to provide the facility as they do and that's the current contract. As you know, we are also engaging in looking at, looking at uh, other uh, possibilities because we desperately need one. Okay, so we've had conversation about that. That, and I think we agree that the existing facility really isn't adequate. However, this contract doesn't address that. Now, sure. there is a, an exit clause here. I have the section marked. Uh, what happen? What's going to happen if we approve, let's say, the f the plan that's under discussion to utilize uh, the? Uh, is it's not Rodowski. What's the Corrigan. Corrigan. Oh, Corrigan. 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 Or somewhere else. And Waterford doesn't want to do that. Well, what? we haven't quite thought that one out. Um, no, the, we would only build a facility at Corrigan with a three-town agreement as it's being proposed right now. There's a, currently a, um, a three-town <coughs> search. Kevin is sitting on that commission. It's East Lime, Waterford, and Montville. And um, we could only afford to build a new facility with three towns uh, or more. Well, that's part of my concern that if we need the three towns to go in and we realize that this existing facility isn't adequate, what's, what's the solution <coughs> if we want to do it and the other towns don't and we're in this contract? I th we're in this contract until we need a new contract. Uh, right now, for the facilities we have, the arrangement is we have that facility that's adequate. But it's, but it's not state of the art, and it's certainly not um, what will carry us to the future. We we, we will work out that other well, situation, but in the meantime, we need an ACO. In the meantime, we need to have a better relationship committed to writing uh, with our relationship with Waterford, which we have not had. So uh, this is and so the spirit is when we get to a new facility, we would have a new contract with a three town contract or more. There's other towns that might want to jump in. Um, and we would we would um, expire this one and start a new one. Well, partially that answer, that addresses my concern, but I still don't uh, see um, I don't see that reference here in the contract itself about uh, one party withdrawing. It says it in the beginning, uh, maybe. It says, uh, continuing until such time as it is amended or terminated by one or both parties. I did read Pursue that. It. So it sounds like we could get out of this any time. Yeah. Is that correct? Not to interrupt you, but yeah, yeah, that may answer. All right. Um, uh, yes. Hi. Um, you may have answered your own question and may not need me, but uh, that is true. That, that opening paragraph gives you an out. And, and what would happen is... As a practical matter, on page four of the agreement, under section six, um, at any time during the term of the agreement, East Lyme and the reason 
in the reasonable discretion of Waterford, and then it lists certain things. We would simply give them notice, we're abandoning this contract. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, under uh, section uh, G, let me see if that's what I want. No. No. The uh, funds that have, or the funds that might be donated for the new facility, um, let me see if that's a section contains, uh, no, that's, okay, uh, two small letter I's. That's on the top of top of page three. Uh, that would help. Just the page three would be great. Okay, oversight uh, and control. Oversight and control of all charitable donations on behalf of the animals from both towns. So w it, does this mean that we're going to split any of the donations that are made or the donations, if, it's a, if a Waterford person makes a donation, it goes to Waterford. If an East Line person makes a donation, it goes to East Line to the f those separate financial offices. Am it's going for to the care of the animals at this point, any donations to any fund. Um, but there's I, an existing fund that and people I think put that money into. Been but that separated. Was, that's, for, that's, yeah. that's been separated and set aside for the building of a new facility. Mm -hmm. They are constantly getting, um, and this speaks to this, this speaks to, because it starts at G on the prior yes. page, it talks about the responsibilities of the ACO. And the ACO is responsible to go to court and for all criminal matters. And then the double I, oversight and control of charitable donations. They are constantly getting um, uh, donations. And that goes to the care of the animals at this point forward. It's not East Lyme dogs and Waterford dogs. It's the ACO of both towns. And it goes to dog food and veterinary care uh, when appropriate, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So it's, it, it, we have separated the building fund monies out, kind of closed that out, and any funding that goes into the ACO now will go into the care of the current animals at, at our facilities. Thank you. Uh, just a last uh, little edit. On page four, uh, under section six, letter E, um, just a little technicality there shall cease it's repeated twice just delete that for the final mm. copy oh yeah I I see. Mm. got it and i'm set thank you thank you good eye on that teach 39 years in the teaching business this is how you know you got your red pen out on that didn't you no it's actually <laughs> this the is the this is, this the is uh, hardy you had some comments anyone else so um sure. So basically, we provide the car like we've been doing, the vehicle. Yes. yes. They provide the, vi the building. We yes. provide the maintenance, you know, respectively. And we split the cost. So is there any impact to the current budget besides that we're hiring someone, but that we're going to get the reimbursement? It's pretty much there's no impact. There's fact, no impact. There should be a savings, uh, even if we go to a, a, a part-time ACO yeah. to, uh, to assist uh, the one we hire. Um, we should see some savings because again we're we're hiring at a different level. Right. The twenty four was yeah, forty four thousand. Know, we're taking out the police union contract thing and then we're we're making it a, a first of all, we're hiring, not not Waterford. They're at a different pay scale on every job, um, frankly. Um because we don't have a nuclear power plant, um, but but also um, we are we are creating this ACO is not part of our police department, but a, kind of its own department head, who will take direction from the police, but also the first selectman. Okay, so there's potential cost savings to it. Cost savings all the way around. So this is going to be hourly rate. Correct. Period. Correct. On call. Hourly rate, but we're still going to pay benefits. Well, he'll also have a regular yes. work schedule. Yes. He or she will yeah. have an actual People work People in this schedule. building have hourly rates, and, they, and they're not on call. You're right. Uh, you know, my clerks is leave at 4 o'clock, but, but they're hourly, and they do get benefits. Is that person's office going to be in Waterford? Uh, well, at they'll the, be working the out the ACO mostly. Right. So, uh, that makes it, sense. so yeah, uh, that's a good point. Uh, do we need to – is there an office space in there for the ACO officer? I don't know. Yeah. Well, there, there's – if you want to call it an office, yeah. he has a, it's a corner room, room. Yeah. something that 
we probably find in the style. I mean, I'm fine with this, but do we need any language to assure that they'll be working out of there? I don't. It hasn't come up as an issue. I mean, that, that's where the dogs are going to be. Are the animals going to be held? I wouldn't think you'd need to okay. specify that. That's where he's going to have to, you know, clean the kennels and so forth. So. Okay. And the status of the ACO officer right now, we 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 have one right now. We, we have a temporary, um, a temporary interim ACO. Okay. Right now. Okay. And once this is finalized, and that will move forward for correct. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, yes, I have some. Sure. sure. No, go go ahead. <clears throat> so, uh, with respect to the, the ACO, is this going to be another duty that's conferred upon uh, a town employee that has some other role, or is this going to be a separate position? We we are currently hiring for an ACO. It's a full-time position. It'll be a full-time position. Uh, and it's a standalone position, yeah. Okay. And um, what are the requirements that this uh, person that should have that's going to hold this job? They're not going to be a police officer. Correct. But is there some other uh, re requirement, uh, background that they're supposed to have? To uh, we've have already actually done the interviewing. Um, so uh, we've, we've gone through that part of it because uh, we already threw the handshake agreed to reverse the handshake but we want to commit this to paper in the meantime we've put out we put out a, um, um, a help wanted if you will and had 70 applicants for the job we narrowed it down to six or seven interviews those were conducted last week's well, last week we took the three top choices through committee and their their background checks are being conducted right now State statutes allow them to carry a pistol. They don't need to. They don't need to be police officer. Um, uh, they, this person more likely will be a civilian, not a police officer, um, and uh, they would have assistance from the police whenever necessary. Well, that that leads into my next question. Okay. So it, it will not necessarily be a police officer. Probably will not be a police officer. But then, on page two, uh, paragraph G, subsection I. Uh, it does talk about one of the uh, duties of this individual would be in connection with criminal uh, yep. enforcement. So will this individual have the, the, the um, authority to arrest? Not arrest. I think they write tickets, right? Well, they, they'd have the, the authority in court? To, to just write infractions. Yep. And the only way that that person would have to go to court is if a person pled not guilty to a, uh, an infraction. So it will be someone that has the authority to write an infraction ticket, mm -hmm. but will not be a full... A police officer won't have the uh, custodial arrest. Custodial arrest for an officer, and and that's where the uh, the relationship with the with the police department would come in if they needed that additional authority in a given situation. Then they would call on the police. To always, always, okay. and encourage. Yep. And then uh, on page three again on double I at the top of the page that uh, Mrs. Hardy was was uh, making reference to. Um, I know that there's this issue with this other fund that was set up to, to rebuild the dog kennel. Um, is this language an attempt to deal with that other issue, or is that somehow being kept totally separate from the authority? That it looks like you're granting the ACO uh, quite a bit of oversight over donated funds. And could the argument be made that that pulls in that money and uh, the ACO would have the authority to? Do something with it. Just since I'm working on that, yeah. the money that's been donated specifically for the uh, construction or reconstruction of a uh, new facility yes. is totally separate. The ACO would not have any access to those funds at all. I mean, what I envision is someone making that argument. No, I mean, he, he can't. It's, it's, it's two different funds. He would not have, he or she would not have access to the uh, funds in the uh, account for re uh, reconstruction or rebuilding or purchasing uh, property for a new um, facility. facility. So the view is that that money would be totally separate, and this would it be is. any future money donated uh, by charitable individuals. That Which is nice to know. There's still a whole lot of nice people out there that do donate to animal um, facilities, town facilities, and um, a whole lot of people. Um, and it comes in weekly, so um, that this person will be responsible for that, including the um, financial ledger of. Said donations. Okay, thank you. So, ju just briefly getting back to Attorney Cunningham's question, what uh, 
background experience were you looking for? You said you already conducted the interviews. How was this position described and what skill sets, past experience were used in selecting the finalists? I don't have the job description in front of me. I'll tell you that we were looking for ACO experience or you know, very proper canine experience, et cetera. I'll tell you we had um, over a dozen ACOs, currently, current ACOs or people working for ACOs or in the animal control business apply. Um, we've, we had um, an, an enormous amount of um, experienced people. Uh, we had a wealth, uh, a pool of uh, great, great um, experience. So I'll, I'll tell you that uh, five of the six uh, interviews were ACO, current ACOs in the area or, you know, uh, people working for an uh, animal control uh, department in, t in the local area, and uh, one was a police officer. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did I understand you to say that uh, Selectman Siri worked on this? Not on this. I'm talking, I'm just talking about the... Uh, He's on a subcommittee for the facilities. For the facility. Not, Thank you. That's why I spoke to that. I'll open up um, a public comment to this specific item. Would anyone like to speak? Um, yes, ma'am. Elizabeth Murphy, 30 Saunders Drive. I hadn't intended to do this tonight, but listen, and I just have to. To begin with, I would like to agree with Ms. Hardy that the last ACO office that we had was just an absolute perfect delight to work with, with the public and everything. He couldn't have been better. And having been involved with ACO since at least 1971, 72, as Mrs. Hardy has, I can tell you that not having a police officer is an ACO is an absolute total mistake. It's just absolutely, in my opinion, not worth thinking about. We need one. It puts too much pressure on the police when they get called to scenes. They're called in and out all the time if the um, ACO does not have arresting or any kind of controlling powers. It can just be an absolute disaster. And with more than 30 years of experience, I can tell you. And I can also say that I think this agreement needs uh, a little bit more work. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Murphy. Anyone else like to speak from the public? Very well. Anyone else? OK. I'll move ratification of it. Resolved to authorize the first selectman in the name and on behalf of the town of East Lyme to execute an interlocal agreement by and between the town of East Lyme and the town of Waterford for the provision of animal control services and to execute such other documents as may be needed or desirable to implement said agreement. Second. Okay. We have a motion that's been seconded. For the comment? Yes. Uh, relative to Ms. Murphy's comments, as I had said, said previously that going from someone, an animal control officer who had basically a love and care for animals and personal experience, but really it was sort of time for him to, time for him to retire. And we then went from sort of a small hometown guy to a full-fledged police officer. Cost us a lot more money, but it was very professional, very professionally handled. And that sort of led me to think about exiting this agreement, and that was why I raised the question about exiting the agreement. If we find that this is not a good plan, and we should go back to having a police officer that has immediate arresting powers, that's immediately on the scene. 
how much notice do we have to give if we find out that this isn't working? This person isn't going to be under contract. Person is going to be, or is the person going to be under contract? Well, he's going to be hired. He's going to be an employee, so I suppose we could eliminate the position and, and he, collect on he or she would collect unemployment because we could always do that or we could find him or her unsatisfactory in their job. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, and with great respect to Mrs. Murphy, I don't know if it's a local town that has a police officer as the ACO right now. I interviewed several local ACOs. Inch, the animal control officer of a town, New London. I don't know about the Groton one. I know uh, the people who are working for the ACO. I didn't meet the ACO. Montville. Um, Salem, I don't think, has no. one right now. Salem They're looking to maybe partner up with us and jump, jump into this, especially if we get to two people. Um, so, uh, I d you know, there's, there's towns that do it different ways. Mm -hmm. But I think the trend, especially with the cost of police officers and their requirement of being so fully trained to be a police officer and the amount of uh, continuous training and education that goes into being a police officer that you're using just a small 10% portion of their training to be an ACO, which is really the care, you know, 90% of that job is the caring of the animals, which is cleaning out the cages and feeding them. So um, I think that's why the towns are moving in this direction and, and, and partnering with the police departments. But hey, I don't know. I don't if know. I, I can speak to if if you're gonna if you get to a scene and you feel as if there's some contentious uh, if something's contentious even if you're a sworn officer you're, you're going to ask for backup you know and I can speak to 30 years of experience of doing that if you feel as if something's not right whether you, you're going to ask for backup and you're going to wait to take any action until you get some assistance uh, and I'm sure that uh, the ACOs that we have would be able to sense that are the ones that were interviewed I'm I think we have to trust uh, that on that panel, there were police officers on the panel asking the question. So, I think there's a, you know a, a level of comfort with uh, what what they decided as well as far as hiring someone. And again, if you feel as if something's wrong, even if you're a sworn officer, you're going to ask for backup before you take any type of uh, action unless it's a dire emergency. This person is authorized to carry a weapon. Yes, by state statute. Right. Thank you. Any further comments? Is that a is that a personal firearm or is that a? Uh, that I would think a town personal firearm. It's a personal firearm. It's not an issue permit. Not part okay. of our force. Okay. And this would take effect immediately upon signing by both first selectmen. Mm -hmm. I think we'd work it out as far as what the exact date would be. We're signing this. We have to hire somebody right. still, and then when do we flip? You know, July first makes the most sense. That's the beginning of our fiscal year. So if we get someone on board and, you know, I, the, the, R, the RTM, they have a much different system in Waterford, which really bogs down some of their, how they get things approved like this, but they still have to go through their vetting process too. So we we'll start with their done too. Right. So. Thank you. I'd yeah. like to ask town council a question, if I might, through the chair. Of course you can. Um, Attorney Collins, the fact that this officer could use his or her own personal weapon as opposed to something that was issued by the town, does that raise our level of liability at all or responsibility? Well, I think because he's performing a municipal function, I'm certain because he's performing a municipal function, he would be covered by our insurance policy, whether he uses his personal weapon or a weapon provided by the municipalities. Okay, can I make a recommendation on what Thank Roseanne you. just said? Um, based on the fact, and this doesn't have to be put in the contract, this could just be put in the you know, in the job description when the person accepts the offer, right. that they have to qualify if they're going to carry a, a either, a lot of them carry 22 rifles in, in case they have to shoot a fox or.